So, you want to learn how to make 3D models for Skyrim. And you've just completed the most popular 3D modeling tutorial on YouTube. The Blender Guru Donuts. But now what? To take your Blender model into Skyrim, there's a lot more that needs to be done. In this series, I'm going to show you the steps that I took to get my yummy plate of donuts into Skyrim Special Edition. We will start off in this episode by reviewing the workflow and going over all the software that you will need to use if you'd like to follow along and do this the way that I did. This is not going to be a modeling tutorial or a texturing tutorial, although we will be doing both. This is a workflow tutorial where my focus is on how you get from Blender to Skyrim. There are many other resources about modeling and texturing that are way better than what I could give you, but you'll probably not find much on how to get your cool new thing into Skyrim. And so that's the gap that I'm hoping to fill here. For full disclosure, at the time of making this series, I am a relatively new 3D student in the Arcane University Discord. And this series, while not sponsored by the AU, is one that I'm dedicating to the wonderful instructors and students there. Without their help and support, I would never have learned any of this. With that said, please remember that I am still a student and I have a lot to learn. So number one, please be kind if you leave me feedback. And number two, do not hold the AU accountable for any mistakes that I make. If you are interested in learning how to mod for Skyrim, in any discipline, come join us at the Arcane University, and I'll put the link in the description. So, what is this Skyrim Donut series all about? As I said, the goal is to provide a detailed walkthrough of the entire process for taking a model made in Blender and getting it into the game. This requires a lot of different steps and a lot of different programs. The general process looks like this. First, you optimize your current high poly model. Then you create a new low poly version. You prepare the models for baking. Bake your initial texture maps. Then you texture the low poly model and export the new maps. Combine those texture maps. Convert them into the appropriate DDS formats. Set up your NIF. And lastly, add the completed model to the game. In this series, I will be using only free tools since I want this workflow to be accessible to everyone. But be aware that this does add some extra steps compared to a workflow that uses Substance 3D Painter, which is a really powerful but fairly expensive software. If you have access to Substance 3D Painter, I highly encourage you to use that in this workflow. If you do not though, don't fear because all the things we're going to be doing in this video will be based on using free software. I will note here that while the general process is fairly standard, the details of how you complete each step can be different. So I will be showing you what I did and the choices that I made in this process, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way or even the best way. Feel free to go off script and try other things, especially if you have some prior experience and knowledge of how to do things a little differently. Here is the list of programs that I'll be using in this series, and all of these are free, at least at the time that I'm making this series. Links to all of these are in the description, and if you are serious about following along with me in this series, please go ahead and get all of these installed now. It will be a lot less disruptive to your work if you don't have to stop to download and troubleshoot the next piece of software between steps. I'm not going to show you how to install all the software in this video, but here are some tips. Blender is our 3D modeling software. I am using Blender 4.2 for this series. You can probably follow along even if you have a slightly older version. But do be aware that the modeling part of this tutorial will assume that you have completed the Blender Guru Donuts 4.0 and that you have that final plate of donuts ready to work with. X Normal is what we'll be using for baking the details of our high poly model 
onto 2D images that are then applied to the low poly model. You can find it here and you simply choose your operating system and then click on this button to download it. As noted right here, once it's downloaded, run the .exe installer and follow along. I have a modding tools folder where I keep stuff like this and I just put XNormal into a new folder right there. Quixel Mixer is the 3D texturing software that I'll be using. Installing it can be a little confusing, so just do your best to walk through it. When you get to the part about choosing mod packs, tick all the boxes. You want as much free stuff as you can get. After Mixer is installed, you will have to choose how you want to log in, which may involve creating a new Epic Games account, and this will likely take you through several more steps including verification by email, etc, etc. PureRef is a handy little program for holding your reference images while you're modeling and texturing. It's optional, but it's highly recommended. GIMP is what I'll be using to edit our 2D images. You can get it here. It's been a long time since I downloaded it, but I think it's a fairly straightforward install. You can also use Photoshop, which is paid, or Photopia, which is free, or Paint.net, which is also free, if you are more familiar with those programs. For converting our images to DDS, which is the format Skyrim needs, I'm going to use the AMD Compressinator tool because it's one of the highest quality options that is graphics card agnostic, meaning you don't have to have an AMD graphics card to use it. There are other free options, as listed here in the AU Wiki, and you can read more about the differences between them here. If you go with the AMD Compressinator, I suggest you grab the GUI version of the tool, which is shown here. CK Command is a simple little program that will quickly convert your FBX model into an LE NIF, which will be the easiest format for setting up our collisions. CK command is not so much an install as it is moving files to a folder of your choice. Click here to get to the download, which is the one highlighted, and then once it's downloaded, extract the files and put them wherever you want. NIFScope is an indispensable tool for working with NIFs, and it's really an awesome piece of software once you know how to use it. Find it here, and then scroll all the way down and click this one to install it. Be sure you get the V7 one, not the latest V9, which at the time of making this video seems to have some issues for Skyrim NIFs. Cathedral Assets Optimizer, also known as CAO, and Outfit Studio are both optional, and their purpose is to convert your LE NIF to the SSE format. Both can be found on the Nexus, but Neither one is required for this workflow since our LE NIF will work just fine in SSE. One quick point about CAO is that you can use it to convert TGA files to DDS, so you can use this instead of the AMD Compressinator if you prefer. However, it's important to note that CAO will only convert files to the BC7 format, which may not be appropriate in all cases. The Skyrim Creation Kit is what we use to put our final model into the game. It can be found on Steam, and just like with mods, be sure you get the version that matches your Skyrim game, which you can find here. If you're running an older version of the game, then you'll have to downgrade your Creation Kit. You can find tips on how to do that here. The CK is finicky, so you'll want to grab one or two mods from the Nexus to make it more stable and user-friendly. The two that I recommend are here, and again, pay attention to versions. Get the version that matches your CK and or Skyrim game, depending on how it's listed on the mod page. And be aware that if you use CKPE, it will create plugins in version 1.71 by default. But these will not work in your game if you're running a Skyrim version earlier than 1.6.1130, unless you also have a mod called Bees installed. You can change the plugin version in SSE Edit, but this is a little dangerous if you don't do your homework first. So the better option is to probably edit this line in the Creation Kit Platform Extended Any file to be false. 
which will revert it back to saving all your plugins as 1.70. Or just get bees and don't worry about it. I will apologize in advance for any hassles you have with installation of the CK. And I probably am not going to be able to help troubleshoot issues because I just don't have the expertise to do so. It's mostly about version matching. So just be 100% sure you know what version of Skyrim you are running and be 100% sure you match your CK to that version and then make sure any mods that you install match both the game and the CK. As an alternative to the CK, you can add the donuts to your game using XEdit, which I'll refer to as SSE Edit from here on out, since I'm assuming you will be working with Skyrim Special Edition. You can't easily place an item into the world space using SSE Edit, but you can still add it as a new record and then load it into the game using the console. So this is an option if you just want to make sure your item works, but you're having difficulty using the creation kit. As a wrap up to this introduction, I want to reiterate what this series is and what it is not. It is a detailed, comprehensive walkthrough of the steps required to get a static clutter item into Skyrim. Like all my tutorials, I'll be going slow and explaining in detail. Most episodes will be long because there's a lot to do for each step of the process. I want it to be easy for even a beginner to follow which means the pace may be very boring for people who already have some experience. But my goal is for everyone to be successful and not only end up with a beautiful plate of donuts in their game, but also have a pretty good understanding of the workflow for how to get there. What this series is not is a modeling tutorial or a texturing tutorial or an asset implementation tutorial. We will be using tools such as Blender, Pixel Mixer, NIFScope, and the CK, but I am not an expert in all of these tools. I am still a student myself. So I can show you the way, but it's up to you to practice and get good at each of the steps. You'll probably find other ways to achieve the same or even better results, and that's great. Use this series as a springboard to get you started and then unleash your own creativity. I hope that you will enjoy working through this project with me. Thanks for joining the adventure, and I'll see you soon to get things started.